Hello dear students in today's lecture we are going to discuss phytochemical tests done in ethnobotany Let us first discuss what is ethnobotany Ethnobotany is a scientific discipline that comprises the study of human interaction with plants Ethnobotany mainly focuses on the study of a region's plants along with the practical knowledge of these plants with the help of traditional knowledge of local people and their culture it means that ethnobotany uh, focuses on the relation of local plants and the local people it focuses on indi indigenous knowledge or the traditional knowledge now the third point is it is the study of indigenous or traditional knowledge of plants this we have already discussed it is not restricted to the study of medicinal plants only okay so it is not restricted to study of medicinal plants but also we study cultivation how it is used as food medicine and the religious value of various plants ethnobotany gives valid information about the utility of plant species by indigenous people through their, their traditional knowledge and so it is a combination of two branches botany and anthropology so this was a brief introduction of ethnobotany now why should we study ethnobotany or what is the importance of ethnobotany with the development in modern science a number of drugs owe their discovery and development to ethnobotany it has been established that up to 25% of the drugs prescribed in conventional medicine are related directly or indirectly to naturally occurring substances mostly of plant origin what does that mean these two points mean that plants are a great source of drugs and by traditional knowledge we have an idea that which plant contains which drug so ethnobotany has resulted in the discovery of many drugs this contribution is a credit to ethnobotany in drug discovery 119 drugs of known chemicals in medical use arose from less than 90 plant species some of the examples are aspirin which is acetyl salicylic acid is derived from willow tree salix which belongs to salicylic reserpine is derived from or is extracted from rolfia serpentina species which belongs to apocyanaceae quinine which is used in malaria it is extracted from cinchona species which belongs to rubiaceae family and aserine also known as physostigmin is extracted from the plant physostigma venenosum in nigeria so these are some of the examples of some drugs which are extracted from plants and which are of ethnobotanical importance because they gave first indication and then their derivatives were made in factories then another aspect of importance of ethnobotany is that we have just discussed ethnobotany contributes to drug substances that have low desirable biological activities or have desired drug activities but undesirable side effects what does that mean it means that when the drug is extracted from plants uh, it is it has less side effects on the human body and through the modification of chemical structure by deriv Uh, derivatization or synthesis of the same or similar chemical structure drugs having the desired properties have been developed for example quinine was extracted from the plant but chloroquine 
is a derivative of quinine which is made by pharmaceutical industries now in ethnobotany we do phytochemical tests and uh, what are the compounds or the uh, or the metabolites for which we do phytochemical tests these are secondary metab metabolites or phytochemicals so what are plant secondary metabolites or phytochemicals they play many roles including defense mechanism against pests pathogens wounds responses to different environmental stresses secondary plant secondary metabolites are different from primary metabolites because they are uh, not important for plants but they are important for humans they also show antioxidant anti inflammatory antimicrobial and anti diabetic properties now phytochemical analysis of plants can be done from different plant parts like they can be done from flowers leaves bark seeds stems etc and knowledge of these chemical constituents of plants is desirable because this information is utilized for the synthesis of drugs medicines and cosmetic products etc now there are many phytochemicals or secondary metabolites which are present in plants these include alkaloids steroids tannins glycosides phenols flavonoids saponin etc in today's lecture we will discuss what is the procedure to extract alkaloids so first of all let us discuss what is an what are alkaloids so alkaloids are plant secondary metabolites which are derived from amino acids and show diverse pharmaceutical activities they are one of the largest components produced by plants alkaloids are bitter to taste they are present in approximately 20% of our plants and many alkaloids act on nervous system for example morphine cocaine nicotine these are examples of alkaloids then reserpine which is extracted from rolfia serpentina it lowers blood pressure and was used in indian ancient indian medicines taxol is an indispensable uh, drug which is used in chemotherapy and it is used for the treatment of cancer especially ovarian and breast cancer vinca rosea alkaloids which is also called sada bahar they are important as cancer fighters there are four major vinca alkaloids in clinical use and these are vinblastin vino rebelin vincristin vindesin these alkaloids are hypoglycemic as well as uh, these alkaloids have a hypoglycemic as well as cytotoxic effects they have been used to treat diabetes high blood pressure and have been used as disinfectants now vitamin is a group of alkaloids which is isolated from bythenia somnifera which is also called ashwagandha and among the various alkaloids vitamin is the main constituent the other alkaloids which are extracted from bythenia somnifera are somniferin somnin somniferinin vitamin etc so as reported in literature in various reports the plant extract of this plant and its bioactive compounds are used in the prevention and treatment of many diseases such as arthritis impotence amnesia anxiety cancer neurodegenerative and cardiovascular diseases and others so this was a brief introduction of alkaloids of for testing alkaloids or for extraction of alkaloids in lab uh, what is the principle behind it alkaloid test it involves the use of specific reagents that reacts with alkaloids to produce characteristic color changes or precipitates and these tests are based on chemical properties of alkaloids and their ability to form complexes with reagents so different reagents are used depending on alkaloid being tested here you can see three pictures first picture shows that 
um, the picture of some plants. The second is showing the alkaloid test and third picture is showing the extracts of these plants. So what are the requirements of these tests? Uh, we require plant material, we require different plants and their fresh leaves. In chemicals, we require Mayer's reagent, Wagner's reagent, Hager's reagent, hydrochloric acid and distilled water. In glasswares, we require different glasswares and in miscellaneous, we require pestle and mortar, cotton, uh, filter paper, funnel, muslin cloth. Uh, so this is the procedure of how to prepare the reagents. and in the procedure which is adopted first we crush the leaves and grind using pestle and mortar and then we make a fine paste with 100 ml of water we filter the paste using muslin cloth and uh, we take 5 ml of this extract in a test tube containing 5 ml of 1.5 percent hcl shake if required and then filter and use this filterate for alkaloid test uh, using any of the following methods in Mayer's reagent test you take 2 ml of filtrate add few drops of Mayer's reagent from the sides of tube and formation of a creamy white precipitate indicates the presence of alkaloid. In Wagner's, Wagner's test you take 2 ml of filtrate add a few drops of Wagner's reagent in a test tube and formation of reddish brown precipitate indicates the presence of alkaloids. In Hager's test, take 2 ml of filtrate, add few drops of Hager's reagent in a test tube. Formation of yellow precipitate indicates the presence of alkaloids. So you see that in Mayer's test, we get uh, creamy precipitate. In Wagner's test, we get reddish brown precipitate. And in Hager's test, we get yellow precipitate. So you can see the results of some of these experiments. You can see the first picture shows Mayer's test, Wagner's test and Hager's test in Osimum, which is your Tulsi plant. The second picture uh, shows these three tests in Vincarosia plant. This, these are the results of Visania somnifera and uh, Bryophyllum and the lower picture shows the results in Jamun and Ni. So, uh, I hope you have understood the protocol of alkaloid test and see you in next lecture. Thank you students.